welcome everyone to our video detailing the Scientix lesson plan template. As mentioned before, in order to get a course certificate, you will need to create and submit a lesson plan. Whilst you will be working on filling in the lesson plan throughout the whole Stemis of River MOOC, you will only have to submit it during the final course activity in module 4. A lesson plan is a detailed description of an entire lesson from beginning to end. Please make sure to watch this video until the end and come back to it whenever you have doubts. Let's start then. The first section is for the title of your lesson. Give a title that describes your lesson well, but isn't too long. Remember, this will be the first detail that anyone will see of your lesson plan. Under the section called Authors, you can add your own name, or if you are working in pairs, please don't forget to add both of your and your colleague's name. Remember also, that if you do not add both of the authors, it will count as plagiarism. The next section is where you attribute a license to your work. This is especially necessary if you wish to be published on the Scientix repository. Note that the Scientix repository mainly publishes under the first option. We do not recommend the last option. In case you pick that one, your work will not be translatable. You can pick a license option by reading the criteria carefully and then putting an X in the box or highlighting the option you choose. If you include images in the lesson plan, please make sure to add the source and licenses under the picture itself. In the next section devoted to subject, you need to include the school subjects that this lesson plan is intended for. For example, mathematics. If your lesson plan is for an interdisciplinary lesson, please list all of the subjects involved, such as biology, chemistry, and physics. If you are a primary school teacher, please indicate which lesson you will be using this lesson plan for. For example, a science lesson. In the next section, you are expected to describe the aim of the lesson. Your description should not be longer than a few sentences. Remember that a lesson should have only one or two well-defined aims. For example, by the end of the lesson, students should be able to understand photosynthesis and develop their cooperation skills. Under the section for the age of students, please include the age group you intend this lesson plan for. This could be anywhere between 3 and 21 years old. In the section devoted to time, you can indicate both the preparation time and the teaching time. The preparation time can take up to several hours, especially if your lesson plan requires research. The teaching time should be equal to the time of the lesson. You can plan for more than one lesson. In this case, please indicate how many lessons the lesson plan entails and how long each of these lessons are. For teaching materials, include all the extra tools you are using for your lesson. This could be online, websites, online games, or even a Google folder. A teaching material can also be offline, such as glue, paper, and scissors. Keep in mind that technology should add to your lesson and not hinder the results. In the section for 21st century skills, you are required to explain how the lesson will correspond to 21st century skills. For example, the lesson will enhance critical thinking because students will be required to form their own opinion about a reading or question the result of an activity. If you need a refresher about 21st century skills, follow the link in the lesson plan itself. The next section, which is called the lesson plan, is where the majority of the lesson is described. In this section, you are expected to describe in detail every activity that you will do with your students and allocate time for it. For example, in the first column, you can write group discussion. Under procedure, you can add details such as students are discussing the problem in groups of five. They are expected to find answers to previously prepared questions. And then in the last column, you give the time that is allocated for the particular activity. Remember that your lesson plan needs to correspond to real world problems in STEM education. You can include an activity that you created that connects the real world to a STEM lesson, or you can include one from one of the modules in the STEM is Everywhere MOOC. In the next section, you can describe the assessment method of your lesson, if you are including any. For example, if you plan to assess your students with a quiz, you can include the questions and answers in this section. And finally, in the last section, you can add methods that are available for your students to give feedback and discuss the lesson. Thank you for listening and I hope this will help to guide you through the process of writing your real-world STEM lesson plan. 